You want to solve Sudoku puzzles the same way the experts do? I'll share five techniques I've learned from watching dozens of experts solve puzzles. The last technique may be the one that reduces your solve time the most. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. What could be in this green cell here? Well, you may notice that you have a three in row two, three in row three, and then a three here in column three. So the only place a three can go is right there in the green cell. Greetings, friend. This is round six, puzzle five of the Sudoku Grand Prix. The hardest classic Sudoku of the round. I'm going to share my five tips and techniques I've learned from watching dozens of expert solves with you. And tip number one, pretty straightforward. It's to find the restrictions within the puzzle. If you look up here in block one, where can a one go? You got a one here in row three. And a one in row two. So the only place the one goes right there. But now, if you look over here in block six, you might notice that you have a one in column eight and nine. There's two possibilities for a one in block six. So I'm going to mark that using Snyder notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate. You're going to mark it. In case we solve one of these cells, you can solve the other right away. I'm going to reveal a little bit more about how you can use Snyder later in this salt. But it is named after Thomas Snyder three-time world Sudoku champion. If it's good enough for him, you should consider using it as well. Look down here in block seven. With these two ones, you can put Snyder ones right there. And then with these two ones, Snyder ones in block eight. You cannot do any Snyder marks with the twos yet, but with the threes, if you look here in block four, with column two, column three, and row six, Snyder marks right there. And then in block eight, using these two threes and this three, Snyder threes. With the fours, there's no marks you can make uh, yet, except for right here. You see with these two fours, you can actually make Snyder fours right there. And then you go on to the fives, you're going to be able to make a solve. Because this five cuts right across row two, and this five comes up. Okay, I'm just going to show all the fives, that's fine. One place for a five in block one is right there. And then with these two fives and this five, Snyder fives in block two, you go to block four, with these two fives, Snyder fives right there. And then in block nine, with these two fives, Snyder fives right there. And then we can do something pretty cool here with the sixes because this six cuts across row three. And this six comes up and covers the only remaining spot here in row two in block three, the sixes are restricted to these two spots in block three. And whenever you have this situation, you have Snyder, Snyder marks in one block plus one of that digit in another block, you have a pointing pair. So these sixes are a pointing pair. What that means is since they're restricted to the same row here in block three, a six cannot be anywhere else along the row. If you try to put a six here, 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 then you'd have no place to put a six in block three. And you want to find these pointing pairs because they add a little bit more restriction. What it does for our puzzle is restricts the sixes to these two spots in block two. You have to find these two sixes to do a solve a little bit later on in this puzzle. And then with the sevens, there's no Snyder marks you can make at this time. But with the eights, with these two eights, you can put Snyder eights right there in block one and then in block five with these two eights you have snyder eights here and then in block nine these two eights and this is going to be a bonus tip for you you just notice i put the fives and eights in the same two cells here in block nine whenever you see this situation which i call snyder on top of each other you have found a hidden pair since the five and eight are both limited to the same two cells in block nine. Those are the only two candidates that can go there. You can eliminate any other candidate from those two cells because if you put something else there, you have no place to put the five and the eight. Now I'll remove those Snyder marks, but very helpful to find those hidden pairs. It creates more restriction for you. I cover hidden pairs in my Sudoku solving guide. You can download it for free. Just click on the pinned comment below. And if you come back here to the eights, I'm going to give you my bonus tip. We went through all the Snyder markings. Uh, you couldn't do anything with the nines. And so my tip is you want to go back through the puzzle if you made any solves to see if there's more Snyder marks or more restrictions you can find. 
Where's the only place where we made any solves? It's up here in block one, right? This one, three, and five. And originally, you couldn't do any Snyder marks with twos or the fours, but once you put this five here and the one here, we have more restrictions here. We have this two and the four, and they can only go in these two spots right here. And so that's another hidden pair, two and four. And if you looked at these two cells and said what could be in there, you'd notice that a one, two, three, four, five, six, and a nine could not be there. This is actually a seven, eight naked pair as well. You need to find both of these because this is going to help us with some more solves. Before I move on, I do want to hear from you. Which of these did you see first? Did you see the hidden pair two, four, or the seven, eight naked pair? Please, please, please put that in the comments. Share with the other viewers. I want you to help me grow the best Sudoku community on YouTube. It starts with your feedback, and I'm always curious what you guys say, and I respond to each and every comment. What this does now is these twos are now restricted in row two here in block one, so they act as a pointing pair now. They're not just a hidden pair, they're a pointing pair. And this is related to the second tip I'm going to give you here, uh, but you notice now with this two, and this pointing pair of twos, the twos are restricted to these two cells in block two. So I can make Snyder marks. And the fours are also a pointing pair. They can't be in this cell. You have this four right here, means that the fours are now a pointing pair here in block three. And Snyder plus one, we can put fours in block nine. But what's really cool, and you find this is what it does with the sevens. And this is my second tip. I kind of showed you it here. And the second tip is this. You want to use naked and hidden pairs in two ways. One, as the pair that keeps all the other candidates out of that those cells. But two, hidden pairs, naked pairs also act as pointing pairs and actual claiming pairs as well. So these sevens cannot be anywhere else along column two now, right? And then with this seven cutting across you end up creating another pointing pair of sevens kind of like what you did with the fours and this is really slick i like what the setter did in this puzzle here because now you have snyder plus one here and this seven we can actually make a solve you can solve for a seven right there and once you displace the snyder mark you can solve the other cell immediately and then with this one move that and solve this cell for a one and now we want to move on because this creates a little bit more restrictions in this puzzle because you have with the naked pair you have seven of the digits figured out in column two and so all you need is a six or a nine well with this six that means this has to be a six and that's going to be your nine and now we can do some more snyder restrictions with these nines you can put snyder nines here in block seven now and this next step, this is probably where you got stuck. I think it's one of the key points of the puzzle. And I still got uh, a few more tips for you, but this is going to be my tip number three. And what I'm going to tell you, tip number three, you want to expand your mind and the usefulness of how you're using these Snyder marks. So what I'm about to show you is often overlooked when using Snyder notation. You'll notice that the sixes are restricted to these two cells in block two. Where can the sixes be in block five? Because of this six now, and that six, the sixes are restricted to these two cells. I'm going to highlight that. Because what you notice now is the sixes are restricted to columns five and six in blocks two and five. And so what you have here is what's called a mini X-wing. This is what Simon Anthony of Cracking the Cryptic calls a mini X-wing. Since the sixes are restricted to columns five and six in blocks two and five, a six has to be in column four here in block eight, okay? And so you can eliminate a six from these two cells. What could these cells be? Couldn't be a one, a two, couldn't be a three because of these two threes. Could be a four, couldn't be a five. Can't be a six anymore. And it can't be seven or an eight. So now these two cells end up being just a four to nine because you can eliminate the sixes. This is a really nice add to this. And you probably got stuck not being able to find this. You have to find this mini X-wing to create this now naked pair four and nine. Because what it does is now it leaves these three cells to be a two, three, and a six. It's going to be not only a naked triple, it's going to be a locked triple. And not only that, a locked triple 
is a naked triple for block eight, but also for column four. And so this is my tip number three. I talked to you about expanding your mind. The idea is you want to use your Snyder notation in three ways. So what we do is use Snyder notation to show restrictions in a block. You can use them as pointing pairs, which we did here with the sevens. And then you can also use them as claiming pairs, what we did right here to create this nice lock triple. All right, so I have two more tips for you, but we're gonna get a little bit more solving here because this is now a two, three, and a six, acts as a lock triple and a pointing triple. A two can't be here anymore. Otherwise, you have no place to put a two in block eight. So you can remove the two from there. I can't solve the two right there. And you can solve for a two here in block two. And then this four, nine, naked pair actually acts as a pointing pair as well, like I've already told you. So now you cannot have a nine here anymore. And you can solve this cell now for a nine. And so you have a four, nine, a five, eight, and a one, two. All we have left is a three, six, seven. Well, since the three is in both of these cells and it's covered, that's gotta be your three. And so we can remove that mark. And then you have the six right here. So this is gonna be your six, displacing that Snyder seven. And then we can finish up block seven here with a four. Okay, and then now this is gonna lead us up to tip number four here. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna highlight this cell for you. Because we still have two more tips and tip number four is gonna relate to this green cell. Okay, and the tip number four is to look here, what can this cell be? The reason you might want to look at this cell, you might think, Tim, like, hey, you're just randomly finding this, is that you just made a solve here for the four in row seven. And so now you have six digits filled out, a one, four, five, seven, eight, nine. So all we need left is a two, three, and a six. You might notice that the two and the six are right here in column eight. So this cell cannot be a two or six either. So if you can either see the two and a six are now a hidden pair here in these two cells, or it creates a nice naked single right here. And so you put the two six there, you know, the only thing left right here, after you remove that four and solve this for a four, is this has to be a naked single three. So this is your tip number four, and this will reduce your solve time quite a bit. You always want me to look out for these, what I call one step restrictions. So you go and say, you know, if I just remove one more digit, what would that do for this cell? And in this case, being able to switch between naked and hidden singles is my tip number four you got to be able to see this and if you're able to remove one last restriction like we did with that four now you can solve this cell for a three most of the time you'll be spending looking for cross hatching hidden singles you got to be able to switch over to those naked singles as well for example the next cell you should look at is actually right here and where you see the restrictions is you have this one two three five in column six and then you have a nice seven right there in the block and you also have the eight in the four and the six all that converges on this cell so what can this cell be can't be a one two three four five six seven or an eight this has to be a naked single nine and why you'd want to look for that is you're trying to find the one step restriction that would help you disambiguate these two cells but once you find the nine, you know this now has to be a four, and that's gonna be your nine. And you can learn how to spot naked singles better with this tutorial. What this does for us, and we're gonna lead, I'm leading you up to my fifth tip, it's gonna reduce your solve time the most, I think, is look at these two nines. And this nine, you can actually solve for a nine now up here in block two. And then with these two nines, you can solve for a nine right there. So we're gonna see how much solving we can get by what we just marked here. And now after finding these nines, you just put more restriction here on column eight. So you have a one, two, three, four, six, nine, you have five, seven, and eight. Well, a seven can't be here, and it can't be here because of this seven. So that's gotta be your seven, and this is gonna be your five, eight. And notice now we put restriction in row five. You have five digits already filled out. It's worth giving it a look. You need a one, two, three, and a Five. And so if you notice here in this cell, you have a one right there. Twos are part of that naked pair. A three right there. This is a naked single five. Okay. And then what that five does is now you displace this Snyder five right there. 
and you can solve this cell for a five. And so getting really good at those, you notice that we can make some more restrictions. And so now after doing these fives, you can spend a little bit more time up here working a four go. Well, with this four and these fours, part of that hidden pair, only place for fours right there. And so what you have left, time to look for some naked singles up here. You need a six, seven, and an eight. Well, you have the seven and eight right there. So this has to be your six. And so you have a seven, eight naked pair right there. And so after solving this six, you can displace that Snyder six, solve this cell for six, displace that Snyder eight, displace that Snyder four. And you see how you get so many quick solves that way. And then after doing all that, what we have left here is a nice one, two naked pair. And then you can notice with these two sevens and this seven, you can solve for a seven here in row six, we'll create some restriction right here. I'll give you another bonus tip. Uh, call it my neat naked triple trick. You might notice we just need a one, two, or five in row six. Well, you have a one and a five in column nine, and then the one repeats here in column three. Whenever you have that situation, you can solve all three cells. This has to be a two. The only place the one goes right there, and this is going to be your five. All right, we're going to move that mark for that uh, five and for the one. And now we're getting some more solves in here. You might notice that we just have a two and a four right there. Well, with this four, that's a two, that's gonna be a four, and that's gonna be your two. And we just have a one, three naked pair right here. The next thing I wanna talk to you about, and this is my tip number five, is you wanna kinda of look at the ability to finish out some of these blocks, okay? You wanna be able to finish out some of the blocks here. So how are we going to do that? Now you might notice with this two, you got a one here and a two right there. And then with this one, you're going to do what I call my fifth most powerful technique. I see the experts do. It's called sweeping the blocks. Now you're going to try to knock out each of these blocks as we go. Because once you do and knock out the block, you don't have to go back to that part of the puzzle anymore. So like this two is going to help us solve block eight, right? Because with this two, that's a six, that's a two, that's going to be your six. Very nice, very powerful how that works. And then with these twos, you can solve for a two right there. At the five eight, this has to be now a nine. And with this nine, you can do a nine right there. We're gonna work on sweeping out block six here, right? Because we have a full house. So we know this has to be a three. And with this five, the only place left for a five is right there. And this is gonna be your eight. And now you can sweep out block nine, because that's an eight. And that's going to be a five. And just take that digit you just solved and kind of work your way up here. You know, we got uh, the six right here. We know that can't be six. We can solve for the six there. And then you have the eight that you're bringing up from these two cells. So that's got to be your eight. And then with this four, you know, you can solve that for the four. And this has to be your seven. And they're going to sweep out block two. That's an eight. That's a seven, and then use this seven to sweep out block one, because that's an eight, and your last digit is a seven. Now apply the expert techniques you just learned to this next video. Thank you so much for watching.